So Eunice, investment in in-building and venue wireless deployments is a focal point for carriers, and I'm kind of curious to get your take on how the demand for capacity is challenging typical business case and deployment models. Absolutely. Um, it's really good to be here and talk about large public venues and indoor. Some of the top five challenges that operators have um, number one is the end user experience to the tune of 100 megabits per second or greater and to deploy these solutions um, where they do not have to uh, upgrade them, let's say within two years, but to be able to look at that in about 10 years or greater. Uh, number three is, some no surprise to you, is the uh, capital expenditures. Uh, what, what kind of capex uh, they have available to, to deploy these solutions. The complexity of this deployment as well comes into play because that in directly impacts the cycle time for, for deploying these solutions. That's number four. And then number five is the space required. Space required to deploy this equipment in these venues, both at the head end room, which is where the majority of the equipment goes, as well as the idea of closet space. You mentioned the need to make investments today that will still be viable 10 years down the line. So what is the sort of model that you should follow as you're considering your in-building deployment and that you know it needs to have an evolutionary path forward? What are some of the considerations there? The approach uh, that we're uh, recommending is that in the last six to seven years, uh, a vast majority of the operators have actually invested in active DAS uh, deployments um, to, to have that as your coverage layer and then add a capacity layer um, in large public venues like the airports as an example where you can deploy the cutting edge technology of radio dot system as an example or for arenas and stadiums as an example you can go with a radio dot system underneath the seat. Again to kind of complement your, your previous uh, investments with the new capacity layer, with using the cutting edge technology, that's the, the strategy that we would recommend. So in the U.S. we've seen uh, several of the operators go to market with 5G using millimeter wave frequencies. So I'm curious what the uh, role of millimeter wave in a stadium or venue type deployment is. Um, the, the key role it would have is to provide that end user experience where you can be on a, on a path to one gigabits per second or greater. Um, some of the main considerations of why we would deploy in large public uh, venues, what are, what are the, some of the, our solutions, how do they solve these challenges? It's basically, as I mentioned, number one is the um, end user experience. Um, number two, it is the space requirements. Like if you look at our competitive solutions out there, you don't need with, an, with a radio dot system active DAS equipment, which basically takes a lot of space in your head end room. So you're able to take address the space uh, issues. From an upgradability perspective, um, you will deploy on day one four to five times more capacity with a radio dot system when it comes to the number of sector carriers you deploy. And with that, um, essentially, you know, six to seven years from now, when you need more capacity, you're able to unleash that additional capacity without ever going to the venue and disrupting any of the, um, you know, operations at the venue. Again, a great value add, and that actually plays into directly on how long it is before you need to upgrade, which is, as I mentioned, 10 years, 10 years or, or greater. Um, the third one is actually the, the, uh, the, the capex um, and the and the, the complexity of deployment that directly connects together. Um, with the active DAS equipment, you have to buy all of that, obviously. So there's a cost associated with that, both from CapEx and OpEx. So you would be able to reduce that if you deploy Radio Dot in these large public venues, as well as uh, the, the deployability in, a, in an active DAS system. You would typically use a, um, a coax cable to deploy. Well, in our case, it's going to be a CAT6, much simpler IT type deployment, again, reducing that cost. Uh, another very important is aesthetics. Uh, when we deploy these uh, solutions in, in uh, large public venues, we have enclosures that actually blend in with the aesthetics, making it really, uh, it's a really important from, for, from a venue perspective. So we're able to bring that uh, into, the, into the picture. And last but not the least, it is the, some of the location-based features that we have as well. It is important in large public venues to, to bring that visibility so we can locate a user within 16 feet. Again, opportunity for the venue to monetize using the creative business models that are out there. 
Well, very good. And, you know, the Radio Dot system, this is a tried and true established portfolio. I think there have been some recent updates, though, uh, for CBRS and some other uh, band configurations. Can you give us a little overview of what's new with Radio Dot? Absolutely. So CBRS we see as a very uh, great opportunity for us to be in the private LTE, in, as an example. And, and Radio Dot absolutely supports uh, CBRS. It's fully supporting that band. Besides Radio Dot as well, we have other um, uh, portfolio, the radio portfolio, we call it a distributed RAN, where we can bring to bear um, that in an indoor setting. Um, together with CBRS, we have opportunity to deploy millimeter wave. We've done that in many stadiums, like um, you know, in, in the U.S. and across the across the world. So I think um, we're absolutely excited. Um, this is a very important area, and we're ready to take the challenge. Well, I appreciate you sharing your perspective with us. Thank you.